angels waging war in the unseen realm. Global events fulfilling biblical prophecy, eternal life. What lies beyond mortality? From analyzing the paranormal from a biblical worldview to the discussion of cutting edge science and technology, conspiracy, discovery, special investigative reports. Unafraid to explore the challenging issues facing humanity. Welcome to another edition of Skywatch TV. Bible prophecy at times appears to mix almost with science fiction. Here's what I mean. I intend to share undisclosed facts that are stranger and scarier than most people can comprehend, and it is going to shake the public to the bone. And yes, this involves a cover-up of the highest order by national space agencies, including NASA. The asteroid is 100% certain to strike Earth, according to one space expert who says this is a matter of life and death. You'd probably have millions of casualties. Is a planet-killing asteroid a possibility? NASA has determined that the threat is real and the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters and the name of the star is called wormwood and many men died of the waters chief technology experts and working scientists agree with me but what's more concerning is that this was prophesied in the Bible for the end times. Welcome to Skywatch TV. I'm Derek Gilbert. Not science fiction, but Bible prophecy. We are talking about an event perhaps coming to the earth within the next decade. Joining me on the panel as we discuss a brand new book from Skywatch TV CEO Tom Horn, our co-host, my co-host of <laughs> the weekly program from Skywatch TV Sci Friday and the author, co-author of the book Veneration with yours truly, Sharon K. Gilbert, Hi, uh, and the author of a book that uh, is really going to make you think about uh, what may be coming and the possible implications, not just for the earth, but for your family as well, and where they place their hope. The book, The Wormwood Prophecy, NASA, Donald Trump, and a Cosmic Cover-Up of End-Time Proportions. We welcome Tom Horn back to Skywatch TV. Good to be Tom. here, and you said that she's your co-host. Uh, co-host of my life, actually. Yeah, yes. uh, of your life, but you, did, you forgot to mention your new program, Unraveling, Unraveling Revelation. That's that partly, absolutely. So that's partly right. what we're doing right now, right? That is, is we're very Unraveling true. Revelation. Bad yeah. host, bad, bad <laughs> host. <laughs> but it's, it's, a, it's an important thing to do, and I know that there are folks who are watching the show. They've watched two episodes now, and they're probably wondering... How does this fit into God's timeline? Mm -hmm. It's in the book of Revelation. Is Wormwood, is, is Apophis actually Wormwood? Do you think that? Uh, I, right now, I say I do believe that. Now, I give God, you know, is, is God's going to do whatever God wants to do. Amen. He's not going to do what Tom Horn thinks. <laughs> but the way all of this came to me, and then my research leads me to, to believe that at a minimum, there is a cover-up. There is something that is happening that NASA does not want the world to know about. And according to some of the experts that we quoted on the very first program, the Brainiacs, right? Mm -hmm. People that Sharon is up there in their stratosphere, <laughs> um, they're charging NASA, literally, with obfuscation, with intentional efforts to cover up and to skew the data around Apophis and other uh, near-Earth objects. Some of the errors in calculation, and yeah. I'm no mathematician or astrophysicist, I just play one on TV, um, n seem to be way too egregious to be accidental. Yeah, right. Yeah. 
So do you he, think Donald Trump has been briefed on this? Well, I do think Donald Trump's been briefed on this. And isn't it interesting that uh, one of the first things he did was provide funding for what they're actually calling the, the, the newest branch of our military. Right. Right? Uh, the the uh, Space Force. And they're pouring tons of money in that. But again, look at all the budget increases to NASA, mm -hmm. specifically for uh, Earth Defense forces to try to stop asteroids. All of this mm -hmm. in just the last two or three years. And why now do you have people, even current working scientists at NASA, going on television, giving these interviews in which they're actually saying that, first of all, it's 100% certain that the Earth is going to be impacted by an asteroid. And, and depending on the size, we're not talking about small asteroids. Uh, in fact, during the writing of the Wormwood Prophecy, in one month alone, there were four different asteroids, that, two or three that actually entered into the Earth's atmosphere and burnt up. Wow. One of them that came very close that they called a city killer, and in every case, they never even saw them coming. This is something that, uh, though, we've seen in, in biblical history, actually. There's some good scientific evidence just published within the last year of this recording that uh, suggests that it was exactly something like this that took out the cities of Sodom, Gomorrah, and the cities of the plain right. yes. in, the year, in or about 1750 B.C. Right. But more recently, it may have been responsible for what happened in Chicago during the fire. Chicago during the fire, also the right, Tegunska right, right. event. Yes. Uh, yeah. You know, where uh, something exploded in the air above Russia. But look at the, I forget how many miles and miles of huge forests, right, mm -hmm. that went down in an instant. Mm -hmm. Of course, if we're talking about Apophis, this is far more larger, far more dangerous. In fact, in a minute, maybe we'll just literally walk through the book of Revelation and describe what is being uh, discussed there. The uh Yes, and, and you, by the way, give some sense of the scale of this when you, you devote some time in the Wormwood Prophecy to the great Chicago fire, which has always been blamed on Mrs. O'Leary's cow, you know, I'm from <laughs> yeah. Chicago. Mm -hmm. That's a story that we all hear as kids growing up. But most people aren't aware that at the same time and within hours of the Chicago fire, fires that were even more deadly and devastating broke out in uh, uh, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. in Michigan, and other places Almost in Canada. Almost simultaneously. Right, yes. right. And so there are those who believe that this was the remnant of a comet that had broken up on a near pass of Jupiter sometime around the year 1845 yeah. and then impacted the, uh, the Earth in 1871. It was a periodic comet that was discovered in early 19th century, and it should have come around and then it suddenly disappeared. It missed the 1872 appointment, mm -hmm. but we had this uh, piece that apparently was redirected and slingshotted towards the Earth yeah. uh, after its near pass. Well, and so the but, idea you know, uh, in the judgments against uh, ancient Egypt, you know, uh, hail and fire falling from the sky, right? It, it, in a, maybe in the next program, we'll talk about how God uses these natural things, though, but to execute his judgment upon idolatry mm -hmm. that's and paganism. One my, that's one of my favorite things about the book is that you have as in the days of Noah, but you also have an entire chapter as in the days of Pharaoh. Right. And it is very detailed. And I think you've really nailed it regarding the judgments against the gods there. And it's, I think when Christ comes back, these lead ups to his return, these are also judgments against that's, the gods. That's exactly, exactly right. And this dovetails with research that we've been doing for Last Clash of the Titans, for Veneration, for other books that we've been and producing here over the last couple of years, and how some of these natural events were actually given names by the Hebrews, by the ancient people around ancient Israel, uh, and were worshipped and venerated as gods. Uh, for example, the god uh, Apophis equated with Leviathan in the mm -hmm. Bible, but then others who uh, were translated in biblical times as hail, as lightning, as right. plague, as mm -hmm. pestilence. Mm -hmm. Those were the names of deities and demons that were venerated by the pagans around ancient Israel. Right. Now, you said a moment ago, uh, you know, that uh, during the Chicago fire, there is evidence now that, you know, because they didn't have mass media, widespread no. media back then, that people didn't realize that this was happening across the planet, right, where these different fires were suddenly happening as a result of something impacting the earth. So here's what I think is interesting. The Wormwood prophecy is taken from the eighth chapter of the book of Revelation. Now, notice this. If you were to ask a, a scientist to explain these verses in Revelation chapter 8 and what they seem to be detecting, the, the very details. In fact, what's interesting is in exactly the same order as an asteroid breaking apart and entering into the earth is how these verses are laid out. They do very much seem to be describing 
an event that could be understood, uh, understood in terms of uh, science. So first of all, Revelation, uh, note these verses in their exact original order. Uh, verses 6 and 7. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Now watch what happens. The first angel sounded and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood and they were cast upon the earth and the third part of the trees were burned up and the green grass was burned up. Revelation 8, 6 through 7. So this literally, if you asked an astronomer what that is, he'd be mm -hmm. saying, look back at uh, the, Chicago you know, fire. the Chicago fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the, you know, this is the first part of a very large asteroid, the stuff that's caught, mm -hmm. or it's part of it breaking up as it's mm -hmm. entering into the Earth's atmosphere and splintering out and hitting the Earth. And of course, aside from the obvious connection to the seventh plague of the Exodus, the hell and fire, mm -hmm. scorching, setting fields afire, all of that on impact with our uh, atmosphere. Look at now what the very next verse in the same order says. Uh, and the next two verses. And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood, and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and a third part of the ships were destroyed. Of course, something huge impacting mm -hmm. the seas, creating these hundred, you know, hundreds of feet tall tsunamis, mm -hmm. wiping out all of, the, uh, all of the, the ships and life that are in the sea. Now, this could be a binary uh, object uh, where you have two very large kind of asteroid mm -hmm. bodies that are caught in their, you know, their collective um, gravitational field. Isn't Apophis binary? Well, I think Apoph Apophis has a very large piece that is coming with it, right? Yeah. So you ha but you have uh, potentially one of them enters the atmosphere first, right? Impacts the sea. Now watch what the very next verse. So again, these are all in order. And an astronomer would say this is very much describing the Earth being impacted by a binary asteroid or a very large asteroid that breaks apart, mm -hmm. and one part of it hits one part of the Earth and then the other. So here is the very next verses, 10 through 11, and the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, uh, burning as it were a lamp. And by the way, I would describe a very large asteroid burning in uh, coming towards the earth and burning in our atmosphere as a mountain. Mm -hmm. yes, and this, this yes. is exactly the way the ancients would have seen this. Burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon a third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men uh, died of the waters because they were made uh, bitter. So the third trumpet then details the second part of this binary object. One of them hits the sea. One of them may hit part of the sea. Uh, it certainly uh, affects the water systems, the tributaries that are upon the earth. Uh, and of course in the book I go into everything that would happen. What would then happen following all of the aerosol that would be, mm -hmm. you know, the heat that would oh, be yeah. generated that would enter into the atmosphere. Maybe we can talk about that more in a moment. Finally, look at the, 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 the conclusion in uh, Revelation 8, 12. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, mm -hmm. and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for the third part of it, and the night likewise. Uh, Revelation 8, 12. And once again, an astronomer would tell you that if object that large impacted the earth and the seas, the, the, what would happen? You would have aerosol mm -hmm. rising up. Mm -hmm. you, exactly. would have, you would have dust rising up into the heavens that would blacken out the sky. Mm -hmm. for a per in fact, what's interesting is when I was reading uh, what some uh, scientists believe happened uh, at the Great Flood, they, I was surprised. They literally described the earth and the, the stars and all being darkened for three to five days, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. As a result of what they believe uh, mm -hmm. impacted the earth in that time. So this text literally is a line-by-line -line description of what will happen if an asteroid impacts the earth in 2029. Each part and piece of it. And how could that be described by people living at a time when we have no record mm -hmm. that they were eyewitnesses to such an event? It, well, it's a natural description, but it could be spiritual, and that's what we need to talk exactly. about. Exactly. So we're going to take a break, tell you how to get the copy of the new book, The Wormwood Prophecy by Tom Horn. Also, the biggest giveaway in Skywatch TV's history, an entire library for you in uh, digital form. Uh, and when we come back, 
We'll talk about the prophetic implications, the spiritual aspect of the Wormwood prophecy. What did John know and when did he know it? Mm. That's ahead on Skywatch TV. NASA, Donald Trump, and a cosmic cover-up of end times proportions. Skywatch TV is proud to announce the largest giveaway of the year, the Project Wormwood Grand Giveaway. When you order Dr. Thomas Horn's new book, The Wormwood Prophecy from the Skywatch TV store, you'll also receive on DVD. The entire four-part Skywatch TV series on the Wormwood Prophecy featuring Dr. Thomas Horn and Derek and Sharon Gilbert. But we're just getting started. You'll also receive the never before released Best of Defender Publishing ebook collection on DataDisc, featuring 70 of the most information packed best selling books in Defender history. These full length works are in popular ebook formats so you can read them on EPUB, PDF, Kindle, and other handheld electronic devices. Give this collection as the ultimate gift to somebody you know this holiday season or take them with you wherever you go. Valued at over $700 all by itself. But that's not all. With the holidays just around the corner, now's your chance to save big and receive a massive collection of merchandise. Also included in the Wormwood Grand Giveaway is a gargantuan supply of brand new super quality overstock gift books, DVDs, audio sets, survival and organic living books to add to your library or to give away as gifts this holiday season. Sold separately, these items hold a retail value of over $900. Yours now for your donation of only $35 plus shipping and handling. This is the largest giveaway of the year and will be available only while supplies last, so don't delay. The Project Wormwood Grand Giveaway, available now at skywatchtvstore.com. Order now or call 1-844-750-4985. Welcome back to Skywatch TV. Remember, we, we make these programs available for you to carry around with you. This might be a great way to share information like this with skeptical friends. We have a free mobile app, a free mobile app that works on iOS devices, so you can download it to your iPhone, your iPad, uh, Android devices as well. We don't leave them out, so Google uh, tablets, Google phones, whatever. Uh, share the app with your friends. Said, look, don't let me try to explain it. Here, let this crazy mm -hmm. Tom Horn explain this to you <laughs> because he might be onto something here. A friend of ours from Australia has tried this. It's a way to share some of this cutting edge information and uh, kind of bypass some of the skepticism that your friends may have. You'll find information how to download the free mobile app and where at skywatchtv.com. Uh, the book is The Wormwood Prophecy, NASA, Donald Trump, and a Cosmic Cover-Up of End Time Proportions. We're talking about The Wormwood Prophecy, Revelation chapter 8, uh, beginning at verse 8. Um, there, there are Aspects to this, though, that track with what the apostles and the prophets knew about the pagan religions around ancient Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, this prophecy, by the way, in Revelation 8, tracks the darkening of the sun, the moon, and the stars, tracks with revelations in uh, Joel chapter 3, mm -hmm. verse 15, Amos chapter 8, verse 9, also the, the uh, plague of darkness that fell mm -hmm. upon Egypt. That's in Exodus 10, verses 21 through 23. Um, but as we look at the name of the star. I mean, first of all, we need to remember that stars in the Old Testament were often used as symbols of the angelic realm, the and host of the heaven. And in the book of Revelation, they're clearly angels because yes. the letters are addressed to the angels of right. the churches. And he yes. holds the seven stars in his hands. Right. And this is something we'll be talking about more. One of the programs, by the way, you can get on that mobile app is Unraveling Revelation, which Sharon and I co-host. Um, the uh, I want to point out something in verse 8, and then I want you to explain why the name Wormwood is really important. In, in verse 8, something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. This isn't well known because most of us don't know what the religion of ancient Mesopotamia was, but the chief deity of their pantheon prior to the rise of Babylon and the ascension of Marduk as the chief god of the Babylonian pantheon was a god called Enlil. And Enlil who replaced the sky god as uh, the chief of the pantheon. So Enlil was to be equated with Kronos of the Greeks and Saturn mm -hmm. of the Romans. Enlil was literally called the Great Mountain. In fact, the place where his temple was located, his holy city was the city of Nippur, which was sometimes transliterated into English as Nibru, which is where this New Age stuff about Nibiru came mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, that's where the Mesopotamian 
divine council met at his temple, which is called the Eat Kur, which means house of the mountain. Uh, there's a prophecy in the Old Testament where uh, Zechariah condemns the great mountain. And I think it's directed at that entity. So this great mountain, perhaps referred to at least uh, in, in an oblique for, for manner by, by John here. But, but then, we also have the sun and the moon. Those are both entities. Entities Sh- as Shemesh well. And, and, seen. and the host of heaven, these other entities that mm-hmm. were venerated, worshipped by the mm-hmm. ancient Israelites, uh, violation of God's command to Moses. And then but we have the, the name coming Wormwood. In. Mm-hmm. What, what is Wormwood? Why is well, that significant? The, the Bible verse says the name of the star mm-hmm. is Artemisia. Because that's the name of the plant, of a plant wormwood. that we call wormwood. And in fact, uh, absinthe, the drink, is mm-hmm. based on that. Um, it's hard to say what the exact history of that plant being named Artemisia is. Sort of chicken and egg, which came first. But Artemis is the name of a goddess who is worshipped in, in Greece. In Ephesus. But here's the thing. She was all she had a direct correlation with the island of Patmos, mm. which is where John saw this was vision. given the revelation. She was told there's an island sunk beneath the waves. Mm-hmm. And so she went to her brother Apollo and uh. said, I would like to raise this island up. Can we get our dad Zeus to help us with this? I don't think he will do it just for me. Will you go with me? So the two of them, Artemis and Apollo, go to Zeus, and they ask him to sort of work with Poseidon and and bring the island up. The island existed in their mythology because of Artemis, and that's why she had a temple. Artemis and and Apollo were were twins. Yes, they were twins. And Artemis, there are a lot of things about her. She's a war goddess. She's Mm -hmm. very similar to Inanna in a lot of ways. So to have this star falling from heaven... So from heaven we get one twin, from coming up from beneath the, beneath the earth is the other twin, well, Apollo. Well, and that's because Apollo in the Greek mythology, and going back his, his equivalent gods in uh, the Amorite and uh, the uh, Sumerian texts were uh, Reshef and Apollo. They mm-hmm. were all considered, Reshef and Nergal, rather. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were the gatekeepers of the underworld. Exactly. The ones who held the key. To, to the, the abyss. Underworld. Well, and it's interesting as you're talking about all of this, especially the etymology of the terms here. You know, in the King James, you read, and the waters became bitter. Mm-hmm. Um, scholars like Mike Heiser look at that, and he looks back. He says, if you would ask a first century, you know, student of the scripture, a theologian, a scholar, whatever, what is it talking about when it mentions wormwood? And they more likely would have referred to it, uh, a fallen star coming down from heaven as an angelic uh, entity, an yes. angel of judgment. And in this case, an angel of famine, uh, which is connected to all this, l- the language there is rich with meaning mm-hmm. about how do the waters become bitter. Mm-hmm. Now, <clears throat> thinking... Apollo was a plague god exactly. as well. Apollo, That's... Nergal, Reshef, plague gods who spread with their fiery arrows which disease. Which were sometimes seen arcing That's... in the sky like a as comet. Yeah. Exactly. And that was my point in this book is I think it's both. Mm-hmm. I think that the that the it, you could have a, a large physical rock, a space rock like Apophis, but it's still an agent uh, that is connected to a fallen angel that brings famine and bitterness and all that upon the earth. So not being the scholars and historians that you are, <laughs> when I'm reading this, I'm, I'm looking and I'm just, in my mind, I'm just thinking, okay, the size of Apophis impacts the earth. I even talked, by the way, to a couple of people that had worked on reports for the U.S. government, impact specialists, uh, talking about, you know, if you take a, a certain size rock, what would it take to be able to fulfill what we're seeing here in the book of Revelation? But I think the impact impact is only part of it. How do you make the waters bitter? So when I first started thinking about this, I'm thinking, okay, it impacts, you know, a specific place in the ocean. Uh, There's tidal wave activity, you know, there's tsunamis. It's all back flushing into tributaries that Mm -hmm. somehow affect the waters. But then it dawned on me one day, this might be something more like the Andromeda strain. And I know we're going to run out of time, but when we open the very next and last program, I really want Sharon to explain uh, to, you know, to me and others like me who really have a hard time wrapping our mind around, how could something fall from space carrying a deadly microorganism? And then it becomes an aerosol, maybe it spreads like a flu virus, but how does that actually happen? Because a space rock is coming close to the sun, so you're talking about super uh, hot Mm -hmm. temperatures, but other parts of space, you know, degrees way below zero. Mm -hmm. How does something survive 
on an object like that, and is that scientifically feasible? I want to talk about that. Uh, again, uh, I, these, these weeks are just flying by us here, and we only have one more to go. You want to get this offer, not just because I think The Wormwood Prophecy is one of the most important books by me or anybody else that's been published in a while, and I'm not saying that with false pride, uh, but this is also the biggest giveaway ever, not just of 2019, ever in the history of Skywatch TV, uh, over $900 in products that we are giving away, books, movies, DVDs, audio sets, all kinds of stuff, but this really is the crown jewel. Uh, a data collection of over 70 of our best-selling uh, Defender Publishing uh, books on Kindle, Nook, EPUB, whatever kind of digital reader you use, this is the library of all libraries. It's valued at over $700. That's what these books actually sell for at Amazon every wow. day. Um, we're giving it to you for free, a great Christmas gift for you, a great Christmas gift for anybody that's in your family or a friend that <coughs> likes reading ebooks. get them this data library, it's by itself worth $700, and we're giving it away free in this giveaway for a very limited time. Mm. The book is The Wormwood Prophecy by Dr. Tom Horn, NASA, Donald Trump, and a cosmic cover-up of end-time proportions. It would be easy to categorize this book and just sort of dismiss it as alarmism, but the Bible says something like this is going to happen. It appears that there are things in the sky that NASA either doesn't know how to calculate their trajectory or they are deliberately obfuscating the trajectories of these uh, objects, and there are some very, very knowledgeable scholars uh, who believe that that is the case. But ultimately, at the end of the day, whatever comes to the earth is only what God is going to allow. We bring this to you to be watchmen, faithful watchmen, and to encourage you not only to prepare, but to take advantage of the time while you have, to share the gospel and make disciples of all nations while we still have time, as we don't know when this will be. Another program coming, don't miss next week here with Tom Horn, Sharon K. Gilbert, I'm Derek Gilbert, and we thank you for watching as we keep watch. This is Skywatch TV.